Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. This week is a special week, it is back to school week where we will give you a guide to various kinds of products which uh, people need for back to school, whether they be college students, high school students, elementary school students, the full range of back to school. And what we have here today, I'm Sasha Sigan, this is Gabe Carey, we have laptops. And uh, we are going to talk about uh, what you need to do, what you need to think about when you're shopping for a laptop for back to school. Uh, now, uh, Gabe, why did you pick out these particular laptops to show off today? Uh, these two I am reviewing, uh, so I know a lot about them. And they're both pretty affordable uh, in the $600 range. Uh, well, they're $699, but... Um, they're sort of this mid-range, uh, somewhere between a Chromebook and like a premium Windows notebook or a MacBook. Um, and I think they're pretty good choices. So, okay, so let's start, let's start at the, I guess, at the high end of the age range at, at laptops for college students. Mm -hmm. um, and we, of course, have a big roundup of laptops for college students here on the PCMag website. There's a lot of options between like 400 and really $1,000 with one outlier. Yeah. Um, what do uh, college students or parents need to keep in mind? What are the key specs that they need to think about to have a laptop that runs well for the stuff you need to do in college? Um, I mean, it really depends on what you're going to school for, um, but these are pretty good choices for uh, basic word processing and web browsing and uh, number crunching in Excel or whatever you have to do um, that's not super like graphics demanding or something like that. Um, so, I mean, they're not the best for like CAD or anything like that, but uh, they'll get the job done for your basic studies. Now, do, do you need to pay attention to, because I know, like, you go into a Best Buy or a Walmart, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of kind of unique laptop products there with, like, weird processors, and, like, yeah. what do you need to pay attention to in terms of processor RAM storage to make sure you're not getting taken for a ride by Walmart? I mean, you probably, at this point, you probably don't want a spinning hard drive in your laptop. Um, because they're noisy and um, slow and uh, ev everything that's up to date has a solid state drive at this point. So uh, like even this has uses flash memory as opposed to... And now to, what's like, this? Uh, the Surface Go. Okay. It's the Surface Go. Um, and although it has, a, it has a Pentium processor which isn't quite as like um, high performance as, as these two both use Core i5 processors um, which is like I feel like the minimum of what you probably should be using in college, um, but yeah, this, this even this has uh, this four hundred dollar tablet has uh, an SSD at this now, point. Now, now the Surface Go is a two in one. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a it's a tablet slash laptop, right. and we have we have another recommendation on our website that says that college students should really be looking at two in ones as opposed to. Uh, you know, non-convertible laptops. Why is that, and what are some of the other two-in-ones that we really like? Uh, well, this is a two-in-one as well. Okay. So this is a Spin 3. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I kind of like this one um, because it's a lot cheaper uh, for the specs than a lot of other laptops that have similar specs. Um, so it has a 256 gigabyte uh, SS, of SSD storage. Um, it has eight gigs of RAM. It has like the basis, the mm -hmm. the basic necessities that you you'll need in college. But like, why two in ones? Why why would two in ones be particularly useful for students in dorm rooms? Um, so I think they're good for so you can do like this tent mode thing, and you can do stand mode, which is good for like sitting it in your lap and watching movies and you know, binge watching your TV shows and stuff like that. Um, so it has like this leisure aspect to it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I don't know if I want to sit with a, a big old keyboard in my lap while mm -hmm. I'm like not doing work. Um, so it, I think it's pretty, like they're pretty versatile and uh, can, 
output entertainment as well as productivity now, tools. There are some people who uh, there are some people who insist on buying Macs, um, and I want to make sure that we get the warning out there right now yeah. about the Mac lineup right now. If if somebody needs to buy, insists on buying a Mac for a school right now, what should they be looking at? Um, probably the 12 inch MacBook right now, um, don't you think? I don't know. Well that one's gonna be, okay, so so I would not recommend that one actually, because yeah. um, one of the things I wanted to put out there is that uh, Apple is about to have two, as far as we know, these are rumors, but they're yeah. pretty firm rumors, two events coming up, one in mid-September, one in mid-October. And yeah. they are about to update, we feel, the 12 inch MacBook and the MacBook Air. Yeah. Which are the, the lower cost entries in the Mac line. I think the uh, 13 inch MacBook Pro is pretty safe because that was just update, right? Right. I mean, I don't know how much people, like general consumers, are going to care about the 12 inch MacBook being refreshed because it was just refreshed last year. Um, that but one's kind of a lot more up to date than the MacBook Air, which has not been refreshed in quite some time. Right, but um, my concern is it's not about buying the new 12-inch MacBook, it's that after they refresh the 12-inch MacBook, last year's 12-inch MacBooks will cost $100 less. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, maybe hold off, but. Let's take some questions. We've got a viewer who wants to know about what type of laptop he should get if he wants to study programming. Like, what kind of level of performance do you really need? Um, that's a good question. Uh, so, I'm not a coder, um, but I, yeah, so I'm So gonna... I am a coder. Okay. So, um, the first question, of course, is what operating system do you want to use? What operating system or operating systems do you want to use? Yeah. And this is actually a funny area where Macs actually have a really great strength which is that you can partition a Mac hard drive and you can run Mac OS and Linux and Windows if you want to. Yeah, easily. Uh, e easily, easily. So uh, that is one thing to think about and that is one of the reasons that Macs, and Macs also being a, a Nix-based operating system, OS X being a asterisk Nix-based operating system, very popular with coders. So uh, that 13-inch MacBook Pro I think would be a great, great solution for coders. Yeah. Um, otherwise, um, I mean, it really depends on the it really depends on the language and the frameworks that you're using. Right. I mean, are you designing games? Are you doing something very heavily graphical? You know, in that case, you do want a more powerful machine. Mm. Um, one thing that you, I think you probably do need to look out for is storage. A lot of frameworks take up a lot of storage, take up gigabytes of storage. And so, um, and so a nice big fast SSD will help your compiling, it will help you, uh, it will help you store your frameworks and libraries, um, that is definitely, uh, and a lot of RAM mm. to do that compiling in. That's what you want to think about. You want to think about storage and RAM rather than processor necessarily. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so stepping down. Yeah, that said, uh, MacBook Pro is pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's the only concern. So, okay, stepping down from college to high school, okay. Now, um, are there any different concerns? I guess high school kids won't necessarily be using their uh, laptops as much as entertainment centers because they'll, you know, be probably in their parents' houses where there's a lot more entertainment center options right. than in the dorm. Yeah. Um, in terms of affordable, capable, mid-range laptops that will help you do well in school, what's out there? Um, so, on that list, um, there's, well, not that one, but the other one, um, the best laptops for kids, yeah. Um, I think the Acer Chromebook Spin 11 is mm -hmm. um, like a, like that's our editor's choice in that category. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that's, it's pretty good for people who want um, something that's convertible mm -hmm. and also, um, you know, runs Android apps mm -hmm. and uh, does pretty much everything you need to do. Isn't an 11 kind of small though? Yeah, I guess so. But well, your eyes are better when you're a kid. 
<laughs> okay, okay. But we're talking about teenagers. Can we give our can we give the teenagers a slightly larger laptop? <laughs> you can, yeah. Um, so that one I would recommend just for its affordability. Um, this one is like pretty. This one is aimed towards um, high school students in particular. So this is the ASUS VivoBook S15. Yes, the, uh, S15, um, and I think it's pretty good. It's a 15-inch laptop for 699, um, which is you know not a bad. Not a bad price. Mm -hmm. It has all the ports you need. Mm -hmm. um, has full USB ports and USB C and HDMI out, um, mm -hmm. and it has this cool ergo lift hinge that uh, is supposed to make it run cooler and uh, you know quieter. And now, of course, a lot of uh, a lot of teens are gamers. Uh, we're not talking about gaming laptops today. We will yeah. be talking about gaming laptops tomorrow. So uh, hang out for tomorrow's one cool thing if you want to talk about gaming laptops for back to school. Um, okay, so 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 that covers high school. Now moving even further back to you know first laptops, uh, laptops that kids are using to get elementary school or middle school work done. Is that all Chromebooks now? Should should people just be thinking Chromebook? Uh, I think so. Yeah, um, Chromebooks are you know the most affordable option and. They don't, like a, a cheap Windows laptop is not going to run super well, um, but you can get a pretty fluid and responsive um, operating system experience with, mm -hmm. from a Chromebook. Even with these like weird processors, like, like this thing has a MediaTek phone processor in it. What's going on? Can I trust that? Uh, I think so because the operating system is optimized for um, lower power um, processing options. Okay, and yeah. and now a lot of those Chromebooks are also a little more rugged and durable than your average Windows laptop, right? Which which is something that you really need to need yes. to think about for kids. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of them uh, are ruggedized, and um, some of them are waterproof or mm -hmm. like um, dirt proof, and that's yeah. that's especially important when you're talking about kids. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other questions out there? Okay, so uh, we do have multiple roundups up on PCMag.com of laptops for back to school. We have a college student roundup. We have a kid's la uh, laptop roundup. We have a lot of laptop reviews uh, on PCMag.com. Thank you all for watching. This has been One Cool Thing. If you are watching live, uh, please come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. We will be talking tomorrow about gaming laptops for back to school. If you are watching on YouTube, uh, please check back every day, every day on our channel. Please like and subscribe. We will have another One Cool Thing for you. Thank you very much.